Marvel's Avengers is an absurdly popular franchise. The four movies hold three places in the top ten highest grossing films of all time, and the worst performing of all of them is only rank 11. And with results like that, the world should have high hopes for the ambitious game from the narrative-focused studio Crystal Dynamics. We then learned it would be a live service game. And then we learned that it would feature loot progression systems. And then they announced the PlayStation advantages. And then we had multiple waves of beta testing. And what we all discovered from that testing was the inspiration for the title of this video. Despite the very apparent effort from the teams involved, it feels like corporate gruel. What was originally set up for massive success seems to have found a way to squander one of gaming's greatest opportunities. Over here, what we do is we cover the games industry on a daily basis. Reports of big stories, news roundups, to deeper looks at what's going on, like what we're doing today. So if you'd like more of that, then give that subscribe button a thought. And with that said, let's get into the video. Getting to do the big Avengers game is a one in a billion shot. So how could anyone miss it? Well, the game was first revealed in 2017, only lightly teased with a voiceover trailer promising a darker narrative about reassembling the broken Avengers. Square Enix, Crystal Dynamics, and Eidos Montreal seem to be an odd choice for the Avengers, but Deus Ex and Tomb Raider were pretty great narrative-driven games, right? And let's not forget that Deus Ex and Thief were firmly on hiatus after disappointing Square, whilst Tomb Raider had been getting bigger and bigger in scale with each game, but also, well, was selling less and less. Also, at the time, Square Enix had just recently let go of IO Interactive, after apparently pressuring them to split Hitman into six episodes, which uh, seemed to confuse people out of buying it. Overall, it did seem like the talent was there from these studios. It was a big name, the movies were doing well, all was on the up, and it seemed that hopes were high. Then, of course, Q 2019, when Marvel's Avengers saw its full reveal with mediocre visuals and a gameplay section that looked uninteresting at best and boring at worst. It exemplified what people meme on modern Tomb Raider 4, a lot of walking forward, responding to QTEs while the game pretends you're in danger. So yes, hopes fell as people learned more. Now though, it's 2020 and the game is about to launch, after a substantial delay, and we have played the beta of the game. Now we kind of know it for sure. The game is a prime example of the modern struggle of making a game turn a profit. Crystal Dynamics and Idols Montreal are extremely strong at single-player narrative games, and it seems like they've tried to do that. But it's also a live-service, co-op, online, mission-based, loot-driven game. And our experience playing it was, uh, well, to start, rather nightmarish from a technical perspective. There were plenty of hard crashes to desktop, there were frame rate issues, network errors, and at one point, the game didn't enable the attack buttons when loading into a mission. And uh, yes, that mission didn't go so well. The latest beta wave does seem to have addressed the majority of those issues, but I do think that's indicative of a situation where the team have not been afforded the time that they actually need to get the game to work work in a way that is, well, acceptable. It just speaks to things being a bit rushed. Now, when we get into the actual gameplay, that's when the real problems start to arise. And I'm sure you've played something like this. You've got a light attack, a heavy attack, a dodge button, and maybe a way to handle some ranged enemies. You need to hold heavy attacks to break shields, dodge enemy attacks that are telegraphed to you via an icon, and get around uh, just general gameplay with some pretty simple combos. Very much a, I'd say, generic PS3 era action game with some neat bells and whistles, and yeah, in some cases, pretty unique characters with some fun movement and things like that. I mean, yes, a Hulk parry build seems kind of cool, but that's the thing. Playing these characters isn't actually the problem. As I said, it's just a pretty good PS3 era action game. You see, it being generic but pretty good would be a concern if it was just one character, but you do have to remember, you get six characters to play with loads more to come and a ton of promise skill and gear customization, so that does make it seem a little bit better. Sure, it's never going to top Devil May Cry 5 or Insomniac Spider-Man, but it's not bad. 
I'd say to give combat a number, maybe it's a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8 if the extra skill trees are super, super compelling, but at least the ones in the beta do feel like they're more just upgrades to existing kit instead of really progressing kit. I mean, on combat, they hired the God of War combat designer, Vince Napoli, right? That's pretty big. His expertise is visible here, but you can just feel how much further it could be pushed. But as I said, playing the game, playing the characters isn't necessarily the problem because it's when you get into the meat of the game that the problem arises. Repetitive missions with simple objectives. The drop zones on beta were just lifeless. Playing a game of Capture the Point is awkward in a third-person action game, as is trying to play Domination. I mean, just holding points against legions of AI robots is just kind of boring. Finding wave after wave of simple enemies with little reprieve is what the beta offered for the mission-driven side of the game, and it is deeply disappointing. It's all too reminiscent, in fact, of Anthem's launch. Lots of systems, but not that much game. Now let's get into the loot. We should mention that. We all know what to expect when a game just gives us a random loot progression system, right? The execution can be anywhere between Path of Exile and Anthem. And there wasn't much loot-wise to play with on the beta, but I can't remember the last game with a generic power level that wasn't frustrating. Now, for a game like Destiny or Path of Exile, sure, that can all work quite well, but this is an Avengers game. People generally don't want to incrementally improve how much damage Hulk's shorts can withstand, or find a new gun that lets Black Widow use her big electric staff for longer because of stats. No, they just want to play the heroes. And this is where we have to look at Insomniac Spider-Man as a prime example. Similar combat, right? But with a singular character focus that allowed them to make it deep and satisfying. And leveling up felt good there, but it wasn't because Spider-Man was getting better stats. He and you were unlocking new abilities and gadgets to help you deal with specific enemies, and those enemies were getting tougher on you over time by design as your kit grew. You went from being able to dodge rockets only to then being able to swing them back, and you unlocked gadgets to blast the armor off enemies, all things that very much evoked the Spider-Man combat fantasy. The loop progression in the Avengers, though, seems like a system purely designed to lock people into a repetitive cycle. It's designed for playtime, it's designed for engagement, I don't think it's designed to deliver a great player experience. Now, to their credit, all future content in this game is going to be free, and it's going to include, you know, character, story mode missions, so, yeah, you know, that's, that's a good thing. But then you remember, well, they have to make their money from somewhere. And then you remember, oh, things like cosmetics, repeated engagement, and then things like the loot system start to make a lot more sense. And good news, I have bonus bullshit. It is on my phone because they have just announced some extra bullshit. So we've been talking about cosmetics, right? And how that's obviously part of the plan to be making the long-term money. Well, if I look here, Square Enix have just announced that each post-launch character will have a $10 battle pass full of resource bundles, in-game currency, and cosmetics. So yeah, progressing your character via skills, that ain't enough. There's going to be a per-character battle pass, and it's going to be costing 10 bucks. Now the thing is then, we've got data mining that's suggesting up to 15 characters, which means 15 battle passes, maybe 16 if you've got the Spider-Man over on your PlayStation, so that could be 160 bucks you could be throwing into this game. And I think when you see that, uh, yeah, I think you maybe see that exciting character action game is one thing they were thinking, but also, huh, there's a lot of people who could be Avengers, and every one of them could have a battle pass, and we could charge $10 for that battle pass, which, uh, yeah, basically is their plan. Now, finishing the battle pass does earn you enough credits to um, buy another one, so whales can, you know, buy it all with money instead of time. Other people can buy it all with time instead of money after their first purchase, um, but don't worry, it does go both ways because you can actually purchase tier skips as well on those battle passes. So, yes, we knew this was going to be about making those cosmetic dollars. Little did we know, though, that indeed, every character would have a battle pass, and every battle pass could be bought, could have its tier skips, and all of those things that we've come to expect from modern games. Just that, instead of getting one per season, it's now one per character. And I think that's where you see their incentive to add more characters into this game actually very much exist indeed. Because when we hear that a game is designed with social elements and systems and a tacked-on number-based loot system, we do sort of recognize that really, 
it's just there to drive playtime, as does, say, the content reuse. And we know that it's all about keeping people around to buy cosmetics. So that is the goal. And really, I think whenever the design goal stops being make the experience people want, well, we just run into problems like these with tacked on systems that really just aren't that fun. And this is an issue we've already seen in another big superhero game, Gotham Knights. People have been chomping on the bit for a bit more of Warner Brothers Batman, right? After the Arkham games. So they got a Batman game without Batman and a Suicide Squad game. And while the version posted to the DC page was well received, just look at the gameplay walkthrough of Gotham Knights. Not a good ratio. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. The game features a leveling system, gear progression, and visible damage numbers. Many of the top-rated comments, of course, point this out, and they ask why. I mean, hell, even the narrator in the video says that enemies scale with the player, feeling similar in terms of stats, but just happening to use more dangerous stuff at higher levels. Which is a weird way to do it. WB Montreal have since said that they're still focused on a strong offline experience, explicitly denying that it's a live service, but then you have to ask, why? Why is the game not balanced around a few difficulty levels and more tight progression instead of this complex, self-balancing, numbers-driven system? And I think we know the answer. We all do, intuitively. Low-quality playtime and lots of it. Watered down corporate gruel. Levels, loot, and gear that all end up detracting from the actual experience of playing a superhero. This is a part of the gaming market that wants to escape into another world and inhabit another character. They don't want to escape into a spreadsheet. There are other games for doing that. These games are supposed to be action-adventure blockbusters, especially the Avengers. So why are they these loot-driven number games? Here's the frustrating part. We didn't get much of the narrative experience in the beta, but what we did see had a bit of promise. Kamala Khan actually comes across to be an excellent character to bridge the gap between the viewer and these more edgy, I guess, downtrodden, sad Avengers. The voice cast are all established names, and, uh, well, that's generally because they're actually pretty good and they're doing a fine job. And the Tomb Raider chops are definitely visible with how the action and dialogue is paced, and I fully expect the team to do a pretty good job on that front. I mean, this game is being directed by the writer of Uncharted Lost Legacy and the cinematic director of uh, The Last of Us. And his experience is, I think, pretty apparent in the quieter moments. It's just going to be impacted by the fact that the rest of the game exists. The loot-driven progression systems, the online missions, the drop zones, just all these things that will have taken dev time away from the core experience of being a great action superhero game. This game, honestly, could have been an exceptional superhero narrative game, or it could have been one of the best co-op online action games. But as it stands, it's a decent blend of both. I just have to wonder how many people are actually going to stick to it when they're driven into this repetitive, repetitive loot system. More than anything else, it feels like Square Enix are trying to have their cake and eat it, much like what EA attempted to do with Anthem. It's, I think, just not that possible to have a game with a strong AAA narrative experience and a bunch of super repetitive progression-driven gameplay systems. I just don't think that's really that viable, right? I think it's pretty greedy to want both, and also, I'd say, prohibitively expensive in terms of dev time. And playing this game, it is clear that this game could have done a significantly better job if they had have just picked a direction and went solely with it, instead of trying to just fight on multiple fronts. But alas, that seems to be the story of Square Enix's Western development. I mean, despite their best intentions and their newfound success in the East, which has been great, they really seem to be great at continually putting devs under unrealistic expectations and meddling with them like they did with Hitman and Deus Ex. And then maybe, you know, they act upset when their expectations aren't met. I mean, do you remember the augment your pre-order system for Deus Ex? I mean, they can that eventually, but that left a bad taste in the mouth. Same goes for you being able to be Verizon Iron Man or Virgin Iron Man. I, I mean, Virgin, the provider. Now, saying that, they do have People Can Fly's um, Outriders. That could be kind of cool, but still, I think in this case, it's pretty obvious that they wanted to just maximize the money they can make from the Avengers IP by giving a big AAA blockbuster narrative and a game like Anthem that you can play for 10 years. But I think that wanting to do both probably means they will have done neither. To be honest, though, The Avengers is going to sell a lot. It's tracking to sell a lot of copies, but, well, how many people are going to stick? I think that to the casual audience who are just excited by a mere mention of the IP, it'll do well, and it'll sell well. But I don't think it's going to be a game that's going to be a top-selling of all time or a top 10 
unlike, say, the movies, which were able to do that. But I guess that's what corporate gruel is for, just to keep the masses fed, to keep it all ticking over, to keep it going. It's not exciting, it's not delicious. Square Enix had a legion of gourmet chefs in the teams that they put in this game, and instead, they seem to have had them make gruel. Which is pretty darn non-exciting. And uh, yeah, I mean, this, this could have been great. I'm not a big superhero uh, fan, I will admit that. But a game like Insomniac Spider-Man seems to be a game that just nails what it wants to do perfectly. And that means that I, as somebody who is not a big superhero fan, am excited by the notion of that game. Whereas here, personally, it's like you've t taken something that's like, yeah, you know, take it or leave it. And then you've just applied a wave of anthem over it. Ugh, that's not going to be that exciting. And certainly, if I was a big superhero fan, and maybe I had played Anthem, and I was used to being disappointed by games that just do systems like this, yeah, I'd be pretty damn disappointed. So that's what's going on with this, as far as we can tell from playing it. I'd love to know, though, if you have played it, what do you think? And generally, just how do you think it's going to do? Do you think it's going to have that long tail that they want? Do let me know, and uh, let me know as well what you thought about this video. We tried a few little things different with uh, how we went about making it uh, in the script level. So, that's what's up there. Thanks for watching, of course, and as I said at the top of the video, we do a lot of things on this channel, so if you'd like to hang around for it, you can hit that sub button, and of course, there's lots of other content to watch. Thank you for watching, and with that said, I'll see you next time.